Now, there are two kinds of problems. There's a person who knows a lot but doesn't act on it. That's one problem. That's one problem. He knows a lot. He's got one, of, one half of the picture. He knows a lot, but he doesn't act on it. Here's another problem. There's a person who really wants to act, wants to do good things. But you know what the problem is? He doesn't know much. He doesn't know much. So he's doing things as best his imagination tells him. It's not really based on knowledge. So you, the two problems before you are, either you have knowledge without action, or you have action without knowledge. You've got two problems. Now if you pay attention to Bani Isra, Jews and the Christians, that Allah talks about extensively in the Quran, the, the problem of the Israelites was they had a lot of knowledge. Allah testifies to their knowledge. They understood the book, يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ They even recognized their mes this messenger وسلم, like they would their own children. Man, if, if a kid starts crying in the back during the khutbah, you'll know that's mine. You will know. That's how well they recognize this messenger وسلم, Allah testifies to their knowledge, but that knowledge unfortunately didn't transfer into action. What happens on the Christian side of things? Allah talks about them meaning well doing good things. And yet, when it comes to even the most fundamentals of knowledge, the doors are closed. The doors to knowledge are closed. They're re refusing to think, refusing to want to learn. That becomes a problem on the other end. We were made the middle nation. The nation that finds the balance between two sides. The, the side of action and the, si the side of knowledge and the side of action. We're right down the middle. That's one of the many benefits of Allah calling us the middle nation. Now, why were we made the middle nation? You know, you, you would think this is a cause for celebration. We are finally made a middle nation. Yes, awesome. But Allah Azza wa Jal never gives an honor. He never gives a position, except that He brings with it a lot of responsibility. So in the same ayah, it's not even the next ayah. You can't even finish this ayah without getting to the responsibility. This ayah is not just about the honor. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَىٰ is the honor. But Allah didn't stop at the honor. He, then He piled on us the responsibility, the burden that comes with being an ummah. You can't just be an ummah and say, Alhamdulillah, we're the ummah of Muslims. Allah made us an ummah. That's not enough. That's not enough. And by the way, if that was enough, you would be just like Bani Israel, who said we're the chosen people. That's enough for us. We don't need to take any responsibility because we already got the boarding pass to Jannah, we're set. You know, that's not the case with us. What did Allah say? لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ I've made you a middle nation so you can be witnesses against all people. You and I are, have been made a member of this ummah and our fundamental task as an ummah is that we become witnesses against humanity. You know what that means? That we carry Islam when we open our mouth and we carry Islam with our character, the way we do business with people, the kinds of neighbors we are, the way we cross the street, the way we talk back, the way we deal with ignorance. We are constantly witnesses against humanity that this is what a Muslim is. Your co-workers are going to the party, they're going to the bar, they're going to have a beer, and you're going to say no. And you're going to advise them against it too. This is not good. I know you're not Muslim, but it's still not good for you. I mean, I, Allah gave us the honor to be at the service of humanity. We don't just look out for the good of the ummah, we even look out for the good of humanity. That's what we're supposed to be. You are witnesses against people of what this truth is. But if you and I, if our Islam, if our dedication to Allah does not go beyond the four walls of this masjid, if we are a different person outside, and we're a different person in here, and you wouldn't recognize that person outside, you wouldn't know, is that the same guy I saw at the masjid? Really? He's Muslim? Oh my God! Subhanallah, <laughs> you know, then that's a, this is a serious problem. Then we, and by the way, what shahada ala nas, this concept that is so heavy in our deen, you know what that means? On judgment day, people that were around us, that had the opportunity to interact with us, that saw us, that were with us, our coworkers, our friends, our neighbors, even our non-Muslim family, all of them will testify on judgment day that this Muslim that was my friend, my coworker, my neighbor, I never saw a glimpse of Islam in him. He never brought it up. It's not my fault. They will have a case against us. Even though they have their own responsibility, we are supposed to be witnesses against them, because if we're not witnesses against them, they will be witnesses against us. It's, it's either one or the other. We're going to court either way. 
Judgment Day, we're going to court either way. But it's, you, we have to decide what, which side we're going to stand on. And if this isn't bad enough, Allah Azza wa Jal adds another responsibility. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the messenger is mentioned. He says, وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ shahida." And the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will be a witness against you. The messenger will be a witness against you. The ayah is not done. The ayah is still not done. But I want to focus on this part of the ayah. It's a very heavy part of the ayah. Similar ayat have occurred in other places in the Qur'an. 